am I right in assuming that the rhetoric from Brussels and Westminster doesn't look too bad at the moment? They're even the fact that they're even contemplating this this tunnel, uh, which would be the intense talks which come after the current talks. That's encouraging, or am I just being way too optimistic? Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I, it, it, it's hard to say. There's definitely an improvement in the tone over the last few weeks and definite positivity out. I still view a deal as an upside risk rather than a base case. I think the most likely outcome here is something like a, you might call it a semi-managed hard exit. So no deal on January the 1st, but we'll try to contain as much of the disruption as possible. The question is really whether or not they can come up with some agreement on level playing field. And then the fisheries issue is often you know, run around the press. I don't think a deal is going to be lost on fisheries, but whether or not this level playing field can be broken. So 50% chance semi-managed hard exit, 30% chance that we get some kind of deal, 20% tail risk disorderly hard exit. Callum, let me get this right. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I love the image of the plucky fisherman coming out of Whitby or Folkestone or wherever, as much as everyone else does. And obviously, it's very emotive and heartstrong, especially if you look at the right wing press in the UK. But the fact of the matter is, fishing is a decimal. It is a tiny decimal of the UK economy. And as much as we have an asymmetric British economy with financial services and services way, way too important compared with the rest of the economy, the fact of the matter is, are we really going to give it all up for fishing? I doubt very much we would give it all up for fishing. The question is around level playing field. And if I understand the problem correctly, it's that the UK has not yet specified precisely what it wants with its state aid regimes over the next few years. And as a result, the negotiators are struggling to come up with some parameters that can defy state aid in the level playing field agreements. And because of the lack of trust between the two sides, the EU, of course, wants the UK, therefore, to sign up to some fairly strict agreements, whereas the UK wants the freedom to, in the future, decide what it wants with its state aid. So at this point, it's not really a question for the negotiators to set out the detail. What you need is some political intervention, some kind of compromise in order to push things through.